you can register for part two of this series by clicking on the link in the description. This will take you to a sign up page where you can register for part two. Uh, all you need to provide is your first name, last name, email, and company details. Uh, once you provide the details, all you need to do is hit on register and you'll be able to watch uh, you know, the rest of the videos within this particular series. So we cover Windows Red Team defense evasion techniques, uh, Windows Red Team privilege escalation techniques uh, you know, for both Windows and Linux, and then persistence techniques for Linux and Linux defense evasion, uh, as well as Windows Red Team lateral movement techniques. So once you hit register, you will be redirected to the course page or the series page where you'll be able to access the videos immediately on demand. So there we are. We can see that uh, it's actually opened up and uh, we can go ahead and play the video like so. And you can access uh, you know, all of the videos right over here within the table of contents. So if I wanted to watch Linux Red Team Persistence Techniques, I can do that. Uh, you can also, again, create a new Linux account and get $100 in credit using this offer here. And you can download uh, the course or series slides by clicking on this link here. So that's going to be it. Let's get started with today's video. Hey guys, Hackersploit here. Welcome back to the Red Team training series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Red Team persistence techniques. And uh, now that we've uh, essentially explored reconnaissance as well as initial exploitation, we've essentially set up our C2 server. We're going to be taking a look at how to set up persistence with Empire, right? Uh, primarily because that is our C2 server of choice. Uh, but in regards to what we'll be covering in this video, we'll start off by getting an understanding of what persistence is and why it's so important. We'll then talk about uh, the various Empire persistence modules available and how they can be utilized based on specific factors. And then we'll take a look at the practical aspect of the video, which will deal with setting up persistence with Empire. Right. Um, so what exactly is persistence? Well, based on the definition provided to us on the MITRE ATT&CK uh, website, persistence uh, essentially consists of techniques that adversaries use to keep access to systems across restarts, changed credentials and other interruptions that could cut off the access. Techniques used for persistence include any access action or configuration changes that let them maintain their foothold on systems, such as replacing or hijacking legitimate code or adding startup code. Right, so this is a very important aspect of um, the red team uh, life cycle or the adversary life cycle, if you will, uh, because gaining access to a system is simply not enough or gaining an initial foothold is not enough. Uh, the reason this is the case is uh, primarily because when you're dealing with an environment or a target that you don't have control of, uh, you don't know what they're going to do to the target system or you don't know how they utilize their target systems. And in this case, we have uh, we have essentially uh, been able to exploit or to gain an initial foothold on a uh, or an employee system or an employee computer, right? And uh, it's very likely that at the end of their workday they're going to turn off their PC, and that means that our initial foothold we will actually lose that foothold, right? Because we haven't set up persistence. So it's very important that you learn how to uh, how to set up and maintain persistent access to your target. So whenever they actually power on or reboot their system, we get our, our foothold back or we get our agent back, right? And uh, again, th this may seem like a, a step that uh, you'll probably skip whenever you're dealing with CTFs or um, you know a penetration tests primarily because you, you're not required to maintain access over a long period of time and uh, you know you that's really not within your objectives but uh, in regards to red teaming it's always important that you maintain access to your uh, to your agents so that you can always uh, go back uh, assess them and exfiltrate data so on and so forth um, that being said, if we take a look at the MITRE attack uh, uh, persistence uh, techniques or the, uh, the actual tactic and its techniques, there are a few key persistence techniques that we're going to be exploring, right? And of course, one of them is going to be persistence through the Windows registry. Uh, we also have persistence through scheduled tasks. Uh, we can also create a local user account and we'll also explore backdoors to a certain extent. Now, it's very important to note that some persistence techniques will require an agent with elevated privileges. 
However, we can also set up persistence via unprivileged, uh, via an unprivileged agent, right? And that's very important because our initial foothold uh, in regards to our scenario here is an unprivileged uh, agent. And that means that we can only do so much in regards to modifying uh, operating system code or interacting with the registry, so on and so, uh, so, on and so forth. Now, when it comes down to the persistence modules available for Empire, uh, they're typically split up into one to uh, one or four or one to four categories based on how they um, how they work and and how they should be utilized uh, and under what parameters they can be utilized. And in this case, we're going to be focusing on three um, three persistence modules or three categories of persistence modules. The first one is user land persistence, and this is very much, uh, you know, relative to our particular case or our scenario in that persistence or user land persistence modules are used to set up reboot persistence for a non privileged agent, also known as user land. Right. So uh, that's essentially what they're used for. We also have elevated persistence modules, which are used to set up reboot persistence for agents with administrative privileges, right? And of course, that's very different because you have more access and you can do uh, much more. And then, of course, you have the power breach modules, which are a series of in-memory PowerShell backdoors that can be used to set up persistence as well uh, through various techniques like creating a, uh, a user backdoor, so on and so forth. And we'll explore all of this. Um, right. That being said, that's pretty much all that I wanted to make clear in regards to the theory for this video. Um, let's get started. I'll see you back on my Kali VM and uh, we can actually get started with setting up persistence. All right. So I'm back on my Kali VM and I have uh, the, my Empire server running as well as my Empire client. And I also have Starkiller set up. So we're going to be again switching between Starkiller and Empire Client just to show you that they can be used interchangeably, although the Empire Client is much more stable in regards to executing certain modules. However, there are a few things that I wanted to take you through in regards to the Starkiller uh, GUI or the interface rather. And uh, that is pertaining particularly to the agents, right? And um, Within the agents uh, screen, you have the ability to hide stale agents. So what is a stale agent? A stale agent is an agent that's not pinged back or that's not actually connected back for whatever reason. It could be that uh, that the client or the or the target has actually shut down the connection or it got shut down by an anti malware service like Windows Defender, or it could be that the security analysts have actually turned it down or have terminated that process. And uh, again, one reason for that is primarily because you didn't have persistence, otherwise you'd have got uh, the agent callback. So you have the ability to hide stale ones, which is quite helpful because you'll have quite a few stale agents o o over, over time. Uh, the other aspect that I wanted to highlight here is the ability to customize the categories displayed in terms of information for a particular agent. Uh, you can customize that by clicking on this little option here, this little option menu. And you have the ability to either enable uh, the you can either display e each of these categories or any one of them. So you can display all of the categories here. And this is information pertinent to your particular agent. So you can display the host name of the agent, the process, process ID, architecture, language, language version, working hours. Working hours is uh, something that you'll uh, you'll pretty much obtain uh, by uh, by monitoring and analyzing the activity of the agent, uh, like when the agent is turned on based on the office working hours, etc. You can also display the external IP uh, if this is an external facing uh, host or client. Um, you can also display the delay uh, and jitter. So for example, if I hit save here, you can see the delay is five seconds and I can get rid of that. And I just hit save and it displays the information that's important to me. Now, when it comes down to agents, and of course, in this particular case, we're only working with one agent. So it's fairly simple to understand what's going on. It can be quite cumbersome to manage a whole list of agents uh, with their generic name that has been assigned by Empire. So we need to actually change that. Now, there's multiple ways you can go about changing this. One of the ways is by using Starkiller, uh, clicking on the agent name and then clicking on view. And within the name field here, you can see there's a text box. We can actually customize this based on its purpose, function, or who utilizes it within the target organization. Um, so for example, um, let's say we have compromised the marketing, um, one of the marketing representatives computers. So we can say uh, marketing 
marketing rep right and uh, we can rename it so that we can easily identify it later and uh, the name has to be alphanumeric so marketing rep um and you just uh, click outside of that and you can see name has been updated so if i click on agents it's now going to say marketing rep and the same is going to be um is going to be reflected within the empire client so again if i say agents you can see we have marketing rep there and again it displays the same table of information that you have in star killer uh, right now when it comes down to agents and uh, you know whether or not your agent is a high integrity agent and when I and when I'm speaking about high integrity agents what I'm essentially referring to is whether this agent is privileged or unprivileged in our case we know that the agent is unprivileged and we can verify this by uh, of course displaying the uh, we can interact with the with the, this particular agent so we say marketing rep and then we, we list out the information for this particular agent so I hit enter and uh, you can see right over here uh, as one of the agent options it's going to say high integrity right and uh, again as i said high integrity means uh, or essentially refers to whether this is a privileged or unprivileged agent if it's set to zero that means false so it's not a high integrity agent if it's set to one that means it is a high integrity agent um, furthermore uh, whenever you display your agents uh, you will have an asterisk uh, appended or um, w an, an asterisk will be appended to the uh, name of the agent uh, if it is privileged or it, if it is a high integrity agent so that's always a quick way of identifying uh, you know your systems based on privileges now um, again as i said within the slides we're going to explore both user land persistence modules um, and of course privileged persistence modules uh, and in our particular case we only have one agent and it's uh, currently not a high integrity agent so the first logical step would be to get uh, a second agent you know on the same on the on the same on, on the same target system um, as a high privileged agent and uh, we can do this uh, through a multitude of techniques but one of the techniques we're going to um, take a look at is uh, through the use of the PowerShell framework or the, Power, the PowerShell tool PowerUp, right? So PowerUp is a fairly um, simple uh, module to utilize and I would recommend utilizing it or running it from the Empire client, uh, primarily because Starkiller, I've had issues with this particular module with Starkiller. Uh, but so again, what I'll do is let me just clear up my screen here. If I interact with the, the marketing rep PC and I can then use the module and uh, again, the module is fairly simple to understand if i just say use module and then i can search for it here power up you can see uh, partial privesc power up all checks uh, what this will do is it'll run a series of checks that are pertinent to privilege escalation and uh, of course given the fact that we're dealing with a windows 10 target uh, we are going to have very limited uh, techniques that we can utilize out of the box we're not yet going to take a look at privilege escalation. We're simply trying to obtain somewhat of a, um, you know, an elevated state on the target. So we can utilize the first module there and we hit enter. And now we can call, customize the module options. Um, so the module options, uh, if you only have one agent, it's going to set the that agent as the value here for the name of the agent. And you can also set the output function, the PowerShell output function from out string, which is simply going to display output in the form of a string. You can also convert it to CSV, convert to XML, convert to HTML, so on and so forth. Right, so all that you need to do now is simply hit execute. And again, it really is very, very simple. And um, we can just hit uh, execute here. And we hit enter and it's going to again task marketing rep to run task one which is going to run the module so i'm just going to wait for this particular module to run uh, in the meantime i'm just going to interact with the agent itself marketing rep there we are and uh, let's see whether uh, you can see task one results received let's actually see whether we can uh, obtain the results from power up all right so power up does uh, provide us with the results within the empire client terminal interface and uh, you can actually see that here um so we'll just go through all the checks that it runs so you can see running invoke all checks checking if a user is in local group with administrative privileges we can see that the user is in a local group that grants administrative privileges which is great so that means that this user is part of the admin group on windows it's going to run it's going to tell us to run bypass user access control attack to elevate privileges to admin so we'll actually do that it's then going to check for uh, common privilege escalation attack vectors on windows which is in this case number one it checks for unquoted service parts 
It'll also check uh, the service executable and argument permissions to identify a few vulnerabilities there. It'll also check for hijackable DLL locations that we can actually utilize, and that's where we can use stages or we can generate stages like Windows DLL and perform DLL hijacking that way for certain programs that are missing DLLs, right? Uh, it'll also check always install elevated, auto logon credentials, modifiable registry auto runs and configs, modifiable uh, schedule tasks, um, uh, checking for unattended install files. That's interesting. We find the unattended path here. Now the unattended uh, install files, uh, or rather the unattended install on Windows is a fantastic system or um, utility that is utilized by uh, administrators to install Windows on a large number of workstations uh, unattended, right? So what that means is that they need to pre-configure the passwords for the users that they're creating on the systems. And they specify that within uh, a configuration file. So unattend.xml. So we can potentially find uh, credentials within that file. Uh, it'll also check for, uh, it'll also perform password searches here to identify any plain text passwords. And then of course, I just ran an additional command here to essentially uh, ensure that I still have uh, communication or I still have contact with the target and that was just IP config. Um, that being said, we can now utilize the technique that it actually, um, it actually recommends, which is bypass UAC to uh, elevate our privileges to admin. So we will again say uh, use module and we can search for it here, bypass UAC. And we're looking for the first one here, PowerShell Privesk bypass UAC, we hit enter. Um, the options we need to change are going to be uh, whether we want any bypasses, the listener, we can use the HTTP listener, we can also obfuscate if we want. Uh, but as I said, we're not exploring obfuscation right now, we'll explore it in a few in future videos. Um, and yeah, with the only option we, we need to set in this case is the listener. So we're going to say set listener to HTTP. So that's the H HTTP listener we set up earlier. And then once we're ready to go, all we need to do is hit execute. So I'm just going to run that. So execute, hit enter, and that's going to task marketing rep to run task three. And you can also check the tasks running on the Empire server terminal interface. So you can see it's going to give you a, a list of tasks uh, that are being running um, or that have actually been run. So I'm going to give this a few seconds and then we'll check the output to see whether that was successful. All right, so it looks like that was successful because we received a second agent that is going to be a, a high integrity agent that checked in. So if we go to Starkiller, and we check our agents, we can see we have the high privileged or high integrity agent. So if you highlight over that, you can see that if it is a high integrity agent, it's going to have this little icon with a cog, or this little person with a cog here, and that's going to say elevated process. So uh, again, remember, it's the same target, but with an elevated, um, with an elevated session. So you can actually see that um, uh, the process ID is different, the process it utilizes is different, it's using PowerShell. And uh, again, uh, every, everything else is pretty much the same, although now it is in an elevated uh, state. So we can rename it. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to say uh, marketing rep, marketing rep, um, we're going to say marketing rep high, or we can just say uh, marketing rep privileged or marketing privilege. Let's just keep it simple. Again, you can rename it to whatever is comfortable for you. Again, if we go back to agents, you can see marketing privileged. And um, now we can begin the persistence techniques because uh, we'll take a look at how to set up persistence for both of these agents so that uh, even if the system is rebooted, uh, we will get back these uh, these agents or they'll connect back when the system is rebooted or uh, uh, they, they will essentially get back a connection whenever we set our scripts uh, to execute at a certain time. All right, so let's move on to persistence now. Alright, so let's get started with the userland persistence modules for our unprivileged or um, yeah, our unprivileged agent, which is just the marketing rep agent here. Um, so we'll head back into the Empire terminal or the Empire client terminal. And uh, we'll go back, we'll take a step back here. And uh, yeah, we're currently within the marketing rep agent. So we are currently interacting with it. So let me just display that again. We can now see as I mentioned before, there will be an asterisk for the privileged agent. And uh, right, so what we can do is we can say interact, and then we say marketing rep. And again, it'll display the output from power up. But in this case, we're going to use a new module. So we're going to say use module. Um, 
and we are going to start off with the uh, the persistence module um, pertaining to the registry right or the registry key um, so again I'm just going to uh, locate it so persistence we can search for persistence modules and uh, we are then looking for the userland registry module so you can see there's a difference between uh, elevated and userland modules so we can click on userland and registry hit enter there are a few options that we need to configure of course a uh, very important one um, number one we can see that we can provide an alternate data stream location we also have the default agent which is set correctly to marketing rep uh, any bypasses uh, the uh, the cleanup switch if you want um, the external file uh, for the payload instead of a stager we're going to utilize a stager uh, now the key name option this is very important right this is the key name for the run trigger now when it comes down to uh, registry keys i just wanted to explain one thing uh, we have the run and run once registry keys here now run and run once registry keys cause programs to run each time that the user logs on uh, the data value for e for a key is a uh, is a command line no longer than 260 characters register programs to run by adding entries of the form description string command line you can write multiple entries under a key uh, if more than one program is registered under a particular key, uh, the order in which these programs run is uh, indeterminate. So we can utilize um, the the following registry, um, the registry keys rather, or the following uh, registry entries here. Yeah. And uh, uh, because we want to set up persistence for the current user, we're going to say HK uh, um, uh, HKCU or current user, HK current user, as it were and uh, again software microsoft windows current version run now we need to specify the key name the key name uh, should be as clandestine as possible so that uh, you know the blue team can detect it so in our case we can leave it as updater or we can change it um, alternatively uh, we can also set it to empire so that we can actually uh, verify that it has been added but in our case we'll leave it as updater we then need to set the listener right the listener is very very important here so we're going to set, uh, set the listener first uh, the listener to we'll use the http listener we set up because it's working very well and uh, you can also use http the http hop um, listener which is great uh, although i'll probably make another video covering how to use that because that allows you to proxy traffic really well uh, we also need to set the registry path right now you can see it's currently set to debug uh, we want to set that to run uh, so software microsoft windows current version run and uh, we're going to use uh, the h key current user so again we can also use the uh, h key uh, local machine if we want uh, that'll work just as well so again we can, we can just copy that uh, depending on the type of persistence uh, you want to set up in our case let's just set the registry path so reg path um, let me type that in there we are uh, so we're going to say um, hklm hk um, local machine and then we can paste in um, what we had copied so we're going to say software microsoft windows current version run let me just get rid of that there and uh, yeah so this what will happen is that this will the, when we're setting this particular registry key uh, this will cause the script to run for any any user that logs in instead of the current user which again is great uh, and uh, you know again i'm using this option because it's the the most comprehensive out of all the others um now as i said this persistence uh, method or mo or technique isn't the recommended technique because again you're working with the registry there's a lot of logging for the registry so again in our case we're just using it just so that i can demonstrate how this works uh, that being said um, once that is done we can then just hit execute and we hit enter and that's going to run it so again i'm just going to let this run all right so i, I ran the um, the, the persistence module with the options that I specified for the local machine uh, but it looked like that didn't work so I ran the same module uh, under HK current user software Microsoft Windows current version run and I've just run a um, registry query for the same uh, run key uh, just to, to see whether that uh, particular uh, whether that particular a uh, let, let me actually open that up let me just show you this here uh, we can also do it using Starkiller. So again, if I say persistence and we lo locate the userland registry, um, 
yeah so again the key name i utilized there was empire so that's the key name for the trigger so uh, again if i just display the tasks here hopefully it actually loads up so that i can actually take you through this right now uh it doesn't look like that's working um let me just uh, check the file browser here can we uh, i think there's a module that can actually display certain registry keys that i want to actually view um, if we say for example let me just clear that out let's just say registry just to ver verify that that is the case um, so there we are um, let's see uh, c sharp sharp exploit uh, enumeration set uh, registry key no we want to get a registry key here uh, H key current user uh, or H key yep that's that's the correct one there and then of course we utilized a software uh, we of course utilized this one here so we can just copy that even though there isn't any much uh, any of it uh, much of a change there so I'll just paste that in there and uh, let me just correct that and uh, hopefully this will display that particular registry key the C sharp server is not running so let me just start that there plugins uh, C sharp server and let's start that so i'm just going to wait for this to start up uh, while the uh, the c sharp server is actually um, starting up we can actually use the shell on the marketing rep pc uh, and i'm just going to query that particular one so register uh, reg query and we'll just uh, try and identify whether that has actually uh, provided any output there we are you can see that we added the empire uh, run there we are and that's going to execute powershell and uh, we have that done correctly so now we have been able to set up assistance for this currently user and of course we're working from an unprivileged uh, state we also have the uh, the updater one which seems like it worked because i set it although the registry uh, uh, the registry location doesesn't seem to have the back slashes there it was probably an issue with the way i passed in the options uh, within the uh, the module options but in any case uh, we have the empire we can see empire there and of course uh, you can also run it through star killer so again if we head over it to agents uh, what I did was I used the same persistence module. Um, so again, you can locate it here, userland uh, registry. Uh, well, actually, uh, there it is. That's the module there. And I set the key name to uh, Empire. And I simply changed it to uh, H uh, HKCU, current user, and then run. Right? And uh, that seems to have set up correctly. So let's move on to the next uh, persistence technique uh, pertaining to... Uh, the user land modules and uh, we'll, we can actually utilize star killer we can uh, alternate between the two um, so yeah let, let's take a look at the next technique all right so the next persistence technique is uh, through schedule tasks and of course this is a user land module so we'll, we'll utilize star killer um, i'm just going to refresh my agents there uh, marketing rep there we go and uh, i'm just going to look for um, i'm just going to look for it here so uh, sch tasks and you can see we have the user land module, not the elevated module, but the user land module. So I'm going to specify or click on that. Uh, the task name, again, I'm just going to call it Empire just to keep things nice and simple. And then we'll use a different one for the elevated or high integrity agent. Um, we uh, can provide the daily time when we want the um, uh, when we want the script to be triggered. So in hours and minutes. So again, this will uh, play into uh, the agent's working hours or, you know, the hours when the agent is actually on. So you can get back an agent at that time uh, whenever, you know, these, uh, the script is triggered. Uh, you can also set up the idle time uh, in minutes to trigger the script. Uh, you can also use an external file for the payload instead of the stager. The listener will utilize is HTTP. We don't obfuscate, as I mentioned. We're not, um, we're not going to use that right now. Um, yeah, and that's uh, pretty much it in regards to the options. The registry uh, key path that we can utilize again can follow the same, uh, the same one we utilized. Um, so, for example, we can use the H key current user and the run uh, and or run once registry keys, but we want the run registry key. Uh, so let me just head back into Starkiller and uh, we can just change this to run. Uh, I believe that is the same command there. Just to be sure, we can actually just uh, paste that in there. There we are. And I'll just get rid of that extra backslash and uh, we simply hit submit.
All right, so that is going to be queued for execution. So again, I'm just going to wait for that to complete execution and let's see whether that actually did it uh, correctly um, as a scheduled task, right? So again, just going to wait for that to complete and actually click on marketing rep. For some reason, I've not been getting any output displayed here within my uh, output pane, uh, but uh, we'll probably have to see whether I can, we can actually pop that out here. So agent marketing rep, let's see whether that actually works out here. If I bring that over here, uh, does that work out? Um, no, it doesn't work out, uh, but probably can interact the same way with, um, we can interact the same way with the empire client. Uh, that being said, uh, we can also um, take a look at uh, a few options that I haven't covered with um, the, with Empire and that or with Starkiller rather, and that is the ability to upload or download files to the target. And we'll be exploring that as we move along when we'll, we'll be talking about exfiltration. Uh, of course, this is not a valid technique for exfiltrating data. We want to always create a staging directory and stage the files that we're interested in. Um, so again, let me just check whether this has been executed successfully. All right, so I'm currently within the Empire client terminal and uh, you can see it's gonna say uh, when I interacted with the agent, task 12 results received, success, the schedule task Empire has successfully been created, schedule tasks uh, persistence established using listener HTTP stored in H, uh, H key current user, etc. under the run key with the Empire daily trigger at uh, 9, um, 9 a.m. Right, so that is how to use schedule tasks for persistence. Now, let's talk about the uh, privileged agent here or the high integrity agent. If we interact with the high integrity agent, um, there we are and we say marketing privileged and uh, what we'll do is i'll just display the info here you can see that indeed it is a high integrity agent because the value is now set to one instead of zero which means we can we can pretty much uh you know run other modules that we couldn't before and uh, let's explore some of these modules so again we can pretty much run the same persistence techniques that we did um for the unprivileged agent um which was, you know, through the Windows registry or the scheduled tasks or through creating a scheduled task. Uh, in this case, we can also do it through the schedule through a scheduled task or the registry, but in an elevated sense. So uh, again, it's the it's the same uh, process or the same uh, process repeats itself. So we can click on marketing privilege here. We can then search for the module so we can search for persistence. And now you can see we're going to have the elevated um, the elevated module. So we're going to have uh, WMI, WMI updater, schedule tasks, registry, um, um, RID hijack. And then of course we have the user land ones, which are just two, right? So uh, in this particular case, because we've already explored the, uh, the registry and schedule tasks module, um, let's take a look at uh, the WMI, um, the WMI module. So what this module will do, let me find it. There we are. Uh, what this module will do is um, it'll essentially uh, configure a permanent WMI subscription to fire the started uh, script logic. Uh, and then of course you have a time when the script will be executed uh, on, uh, or you can also set it to run on system startup. So again, we'll set this up there and uh, we'll provide it with a name. Uh, we'll just call it WMI, right? And at startup can be set to true. We can also set a daily time to trigger the script. Um, if we are setting the, um, if we are using the uh, the at startup option here or the at startup option switch, uh, again the trigger script will be executed within five minutes, or uh, the script will be executed within five minutes of system startup. Uh, you can also provide an external file instead of the payload, as I mentioned. Uh, trigger the script with a fail logon attempt for. Uh, from a specific user. Uh, this can be used when you're trying to, to actually get it to execute by authenticating yourself either through um, a, 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 either through RDP or any other, uh, any, any, any other technique so that you can get the agent back. Uh, but in this case, uh, this looks fine. Um, so I'm just going to hit submit. And uh, again, I'm just gonna wait for this to be executed. All right, so um, interacting with the marketing privileged agent reveals that WMI persistence is established using a listener 
HTTP on startup WMI subscription trigger, right? So that looks like it was successful. Disregard this particular task. This was just a uh, a check uh, using Starkiller for the um, for the current directory. So again, if I this is essentially what I was doing. Uh, that being said, we can actually again take a look at one more technique um, that, of course, is going to be based on uh, on your current working environment and the target infrastructure. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to restart the target system and uh, let's see whether we we actually get our agents back or we get a call back. Uh, you know, essentially verifying that the persistence techniques were legitimate. All right, um, so the next technique that I'm going to highlight uh, will essentially deal with uh, creating uh, local user accounts as a means of persistence or maintaining some of some form of access. Although, as I said, uh, this is not recommended if you're working in an environment that's uh, that's constantly being monitored. So again, this will depend on 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 the environment that you're dealing with. And uh, again, we'll also take a look at how to set up a backdoor for a particular user. Um, so what we'll do is we'll work with the privileged um, with the privileged agent here, and I can then search for it here, uh, persistence, uh, and we're looking for um, the module that allows us to add a user. We'll also take a look at dead user, but we can take a look at uh, add uh, net user here, and you can also display the actual uh, technique um, uh, for for this particular module uh, on the MITRE website here. So you can see system owner user discovery adversaries may attempt to identify the primary user currently logged in user set etc. And then of course it provides us with the technique ID, um, which again will provide us with an idea of what this particular module does. So uh, what we can do is we search for T1033. Let's see what that does. We, you know, this is always uh, good to actually go through that. Uh, T1033. Um, let's actually search for that. I can actually find that here. Um, uh, let's head over to the matrix here. T1033, right? Um, we're currently within, uh, we're currently within persistence. If we click on uh, account manipulation, T1033. Um, can we take a look at um, account manipulation? There we, we have the sub techniques. Uh, and we are essentially working on creating another user account here. Um, let's see if I can identify that just through this. Uh, there we are, create account. Uh, although that's not the correct technique. Um, but uh, again, this process essentially involves create an account to maintain an access, maintain access to victim systems, right? So let's head over back to Starkiller. So there we are, misc uh, miscellaneous add net user, the computer name. Uh, host name to add the um, the local user to the domain, the specified domain to add the user to uh, the group name, which is administrators, and then the password for that particular user, and uh, of course the backdoor or sorry the username, which in this case it's set to backdoor, which I don't recommend. Uh, if we head over to agents, we can see that uh, the host name is MS Edge. Uh, win 10 there so again if i click on that there and then we search for uh add user add uh user if i can find it there we are and uh, again the no local host name we provide we don't have a domain here because we're not dealing with domains or active directory the group name administrators that is correct there's the administrators group um, and then we provide a password and we can call this empire let's see if this works um all right so that's been queued uh, for execution. The other module that I wanted to highlight here was the process of uh, creating a backdoor for a user. And uh, you can use that using the power breach module that I uh, highlighted within the um, uh, within the slide. So power breach dead user, what this does, what this module will do is it'll, it'll set up a script that will provide you with an agent. Uh, if a particular user is deleted, like for example, we created our our empire user. And uh, we can then set up the dead user script here to actually provide us with a an agent or a uh, essentially execute a script that will provide us with an agent uh, sort of similar to a um, a backdoor when the empire user is deleted, right? And uh, we'll we'll get to this in a second. Before we do that, I just want to make sure uh, that the empire user has been created. And as I said, that's not something re I recommend doing. I'm just highlighting various techniques here. 
All right, so I'm back on the client here and uh, you can see that it um, it essentially uh, added the user for us and we did that on the privileged agent for a reason. Uh, so now if we open up a shell uh, session and we say net user, uh, let's see whether that actually uh, will, will actually display that user for us. And uh, you can see we have the Empire user there and uh, we can then log in to it uh, through whatever technique, RDP or uh, even SMB using PSXEC if we wish to do that. Uh, and uh, we can essentially authenticate. So we've added it and it's part of the admin user uh, or the administrators group, sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's how to set up the user account. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to be using the dead user script or the dead user module uh, because uh, again, uh, if I, let me just uh, display this to you so we can actually take a look at how to set it up so you set up your listener uh, that's for the agent to connect back to you then have the um, the sleep time so this is the time in seconds to sleep between checks so it'll check every 30 seconds whether that user has been deleted if it exists it will not run or trigger the script if it's been deleted it'll then trigger it now in regards to the trigger of the script uh, for the back door or you know the uh, in, in in regards to the actual duration or timeout for the um for the back door to be run we can set it to zero to run forever or almost immediately the user account to check for existence is going to be empire and then we can specify a domain or an out file right so i'm not going to use this module because again in our case it's not really necessary uh, but again if you are setting up another user on the system and you want to have a back door for that user you can do that as well and uh, yeah, those are pretty much all the techniques that I wanted to highlight at this point. As I said, these are not advanced techniques. They're typically exploiting uh, Windows services like PowerShell or scheduled tasks. Uh, the next step now would be to restart the target system and let's see whether we get our agents to actually connect back to us once the system is restarted. So again, we're moving now from uh, our initial foothold to actually setting up persistence and now testing the persistence. So uh, again, we're going to assume that the target has shut down or uh, has uh, restarted the system. So I'm going to restart the target system and let's see whether we get our agents back. All right, so I restarted the target system and I received the call back from um, I received the call back in the form of agents, uh, thanks to uh, the various uh, persistence techniques that we had uh, set up or the various modules that we had utilized. And you can see that we have three agents. Now, the reason we have three agents is because if you remember when we were setting up persistence, we had set up or we had used two uh, user land modules for the unprivileged agent, uh, which was per persistence through the registry and persistence through scheduled task, uh, tasks, which is why we actually received two unprivileged agents from the marketing rep agent here and then we also set up uh, persistence using the um using the privileged persistence module uh, wmi that essentially uh, again will provide us with a uh, a persistent uh, uh, elevated agent or a privileged agent and you can see it right over here now of course as they reconnect they're going to be under new names and of course you can learn more about them you can just click on them change their name here and uh, every time the system restarts, they will ping back. Um, so you need to be aware of that. Uh, and of course, uh, if we go back into our agents here. You can now see for some reason that is a, an elevated session. That's weird. Uh, we don't have any. If we hide the stale agents there, we can see our current ones. And their connection has been facilitated or the process they're utilizing is PowerShell. And of course, you can, you can take a look at their usernames here. And they, of course, this indicates the user that they're currently using. We can see that these are indeed privileged. Uh, for some reason, this one, uh, both of these look to be elevated uh, or high integrity agents. Uh, in any case, you can see that the techniques we utilized or the modules we utilized worked. Uh, in addition to the modules that we utilized, we also set up a, um, a, a another user on the system, a local user that's part of the admin uh, group. And, uh, you know, we, we set the, the username to Empire and that can, again, provide us with access when we need it, if we need it. Uh, and of course, uh, that can be utilized in a multitude of ways. Although, as I mentioned, uh, that's not something that I would recommend doing in a highly secured or, or monitored environment. Uh, that being said, uh, that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.
A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you.